Yo, what is up guys, welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to talk about how to make the kick cut through the mix. And by this I mean how to make the kick stand out or how to make the kick easy to hear. I hear a lot of songs from people that send me for feedback where the kick is masked by the class, by the rides, by effects, by a lot of things. And you cannot really hear the kick well. And this is not good, especially in EDM music where the kick is the most important sound basically in, in the song, you know. Without the kick you don't have a drop and without the drop you don't have electronic dance music basically. So today I'm going to show you three techniques that you can use to make the kick cut through the mix they are super simple so don't wait more and let's get to it okay so i have here some sounds the kick clap and ride some synth and some effects and the first thing you need to take care of is the volume of the kick it needs to be loud of course because this way it's going to be easier to hear but not too loud because what's going to happen i'm going to just put the kick on the synth and i'm going to increase a bit the volume of the kick so if we look here on the smxoscope that is going to show the wave of this sound when we play it okay we can see that this is the kick and these are the synths so when you're going to master your song, what's going to happen is that the, imagine that this line is the limiter. When the limiter starts going down and limiting the sound, when it gets to the synth, the kick is way too much limited. So it probably is going to start um, distorting. And you're not going to get an average dynamic range value if you, the kick is too loud. So you need the kick to be more or less at the same volume, a bit louder of the synth. And this way it's going to sound better and at the same time it's going to be louder. So it's going to be there, you know, it's going to stand out from the rest. So how to set the right volumes? You can use plugins like this one, but I don't really recommend you just to check it at the end. And it's better to trust your ears. So how I set it? What I do is I use the pink noise technique. I put everything in mono and I decrease the volume a lot. Why? All of this has a reason. The first one, the pink noise, is because it helps you a lot to realize if something is loud. When you have your song playing, maybe you cannot really hear if something is loud, but when you put the pink noise, this sound is gonna help you to realize if something is loud, because maybe you have the pink noise in a value, you know, and the leads are almost there but you cannot really hear them but you can hear super super well the kick or the clap or the snare or whatever so it means it's so loud you know this, this pink noise helps you as a reference also i like to put the master on mono just to check this because sometimes when you have the sound in a stereo the sides can trick you a bit and can make you think that something is loud but when it's not so if you put something in mono you're gonna realize what is the actual volume of the sound and when you decrease the volume you know, a lot, it's gonna help you too because this way when, when something is loud, you cannot really hear difference in the in the volumes of the sounds. But when it's low, you can actually hear the, the, the difference because maybe you can only hear the kick and you cannot hear anything else. So that means the kick is too loud. But if you can hear the kick and you can hear the leads and so on, more or less at the same volume, it means that the volume is right. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna put everything also the pink noise, I decrease it here the volume and I have it in mono, so what I'm gonna do is try to match the volumes of these sounds. Let's start with the kick, so I'm gonna mute just like this. As you can hear, we have the pink noise, we can hear a bit the leads and so on, but the kick is, we can hear it super super well, so it means it's so loud. This would be too much. So somewhere around here would be okay. So now we have this volume. Again, if we look here, you can see now the kick and the synth are closer, so it has a better dynamic range and it has a better balance in the volumes. The second tip would be sidechain, but not the normal sidechain as we have in the leads, because for example, here on our leads we have this kickstart, on the bass line we have this kickstart too, and also in the sub and the chords. I mean a sidechain just for the attack of the sounds, and you need to sidechain everything or almost everything. I'm just gonna solo the kick, the claps on the right, and if we mute the kick, we can hear that the clap on the right has an attack. So I'm gonna uh, link them to this channel, both to the channel. And here, what I'm gonna do is open a volume shaper. You can use Grossbeat, you can use LFO2 or whatever, the plugin you like that you can create different waves for sidechain, you know, not just Kickstarter that has some presets. And I like to put it this way. Why this way? Because this way, you're, what you're doing is sidechaining the attack of this sound, so you give a space to the attack of the kick, that is the important one. And also a bit at the end, because this way you make sure that when the kick is gonna sound, there's not gonna be anything sounding, you know, the claps and the rides are not gonna be sounding, you make sure about that. But this is too obvious, so I like to decrease a bit the mix, I'm just gonna play it for you. So this is too obvious, I prefer to put it on maybe 60, 70, where you cannot really hear that there is sidechain. So compare before and after.
You know, this way the transition of the kick is a lot, lot cleaner. And you can do this with everything, you know. For example, sometimes I, I put it the same preset, the same, the same sidechain on the leads. Probably in these ones I wouldn't use it because these leads are not really that attacky, you know. But if you are using some leads that have a lot, lot of attack or like plug leads or something like this, maybe you want to use this technique or at least try it. So I like to put it uh, also sometimes in bass lines or in chords, in, in all the signs basically, because this way I make sure the key has a space for its attack, you know, and this way it cuts more through the mix. And I also like to use it on the um, effects like crashes or downlifters. But what's going to happen here? If we put this volume shaper here, and we just have the kick and, and the effects. You can hear the trend, the, the side chain all the time in every kick. So I don't like to do it this way because, for example, here there is no transient on the effects and here there is no transient on the effects, just at the beginning. So what I prefer to do is, instead of using the, the volume shaper here, is going to the beginning of the of the sound and just cutting the transient of it. So this way you give a space for the transient of the kick. If we compare before and after, this was before, and this is after. You still have the same sound on the effects, but the kick has a space to breathe, you know, and a space for its attack. The last tip will be just for the kick, and it's by giving it more attack. You can do it in different ways. One way, the simplest one, is by using an EQ. What you have to do is just try to find where the kick sits in the highs. Let's say it's here, and increase it. Okay, not that much, just a little bit, but I'm gonna do it a lot so you can hear the difference. So if we compare before and after, You can easily hear that it stands out a lot more, but of course we don't want that much. Another way to do it is by using a transient designer or transient processor, and it's by giving more attack to it. Of course this is too much, and if we look here on this uh, exoscope, you can see that the transient is way, way too much. But just to show you, I'm just gonna put it like this. you can easily hear difference, you know? So you just want to apply a bit. You can also do this with a compressor. For example, if we use the deglue, what I like to do is compress a lot and try to find a tag value where we can just hear the tag. With this somewhere around here and here, just say here. And just compress a bit, you know? This way, if we look here, we, all, we are also giving more attack to it, you know? As you can see. And of course you can use a little bit of EQ and also a little bit of the transient processor or the compressor to get a better result. So well guys, this was everything. This is what I do in all my songs to make the kick cut through the mix, to make it stand out a lot more. And of course you don't have to use just one technique, you can combine them all. Of course you need to set the right volume, that's the first thing. And you can use the techniques I show you. You can add a bit of highs with the EQ, you can add a bit of transient this, uh, with the transient processor. You can also use the sidechain thing, especially Actually, this one I use it always or almost always in my drums because this way uh, they don't have the attack and they don't clash with the attack of the kick. And well, if you have all the suggestions, all the tips that you use to make it uh, stand out a lot more, just leave it down in the comments so we all know can learn from it. And well, guys, don't forget to leave a like if this video helped you. Don't forget to subscribe to the Minnesota tutorial and see you in the next video. <laughs>